In our previous video, we configured these Kinetics 5300 servo drives to communicate with this Allen Bradley Compact Logics PLC, with the main goals being to add the servos to our I.O. configuration under Ethernet, create our motion group with the left and right axis, and ultimately get a solid I.O. light on our Compact Logics PLC. In this video, we're going to configure our servo motors because we didn't actually do that in the last video and get them enabled. And I'm not going to do this in the perfect step-by-step -step order because I don't see you guys doing that. I'm going to try to walk you through what I see you do most commonly so we can see what we run up against and how to work around it. The first thing you always want to do when you set up that Kinetics application is just get those servos enabled. All you're hoping is that you can grab this and it'll fight you trying to turn. And we're going to use a motion servo on instruction to do that. So on our instruction categories, if we go over to the right, then you're going to have six motion categories. You have your motion state, motion move, motion group, motion event, motion config, and motion coordinated. And under the motion state, here is your MSO motion servo on instruction. I'm going to bring down a new rung and bring that MSO in. But start with just the left axis. That way you can learn everything you need and then not have to redo a bunch of stuff twice. And I'm going to call this my left axis MSO. And then anytime we type words, we're going to right click those words and new. And it already knows what to do. We're just going to hit the create button. And then we're going to put something in front of it. That way we can toggle this on and see what it's going to do. So we're going to go look for a one examine on down. And this is going to be my left servo on. We'll right click it, new, create, and finalize that. Now let's right click left servo on and we're going to toggle the bit and see it enables and we immediately get an error. So to find our error, let's right click left axis MSO and monitor. And we'll open it up and it says that our error code is 82. And this is absolutely the most common question I get is what do I do about error code 82? Because it is the one that you'll run up on the most. And the big two reasons that you usually end up with this is that your safe torque off is not enabled or your servo is not enabled. First, let's look up error code 82 in the help section just so you can see what it's going to say. The easiest way to get there is to right click your MSO and go to instruction help. And then we're going to scroll to the very bottom and we have motion error codes. I'm going to click it and then we'll go down to error code number 82. And it says the axis was found to be in the incorrect operational state. There are other reasons, but I feel fairly confident that it's going to be that either your safe to work off is not wired correctly or the servo enable input is not on. Now, if you purchased our Kinetics trainer, then the safe torque off came pre-wired to your red mushroom button, but we have not wired the enable because there are a lot of different ways you could do that. To get a quick view of the status of one of your accesses, right click the white space at the bottom of your controller organizer and click show quick view. And down there we can say its axis state is start inhibited. And if we go a little further down, start inhibit is access enable input, feedback not configured input. So we got both of those right now. And we're going to take care of them one at a time. So we're going to do the access enable first. By default, digital input one is going to be the enable input. And it says right here, input one is going to be pin one. And it's a 24 volt current syncing fast input. And I'll put a link to our syncing versus sourcing video at the end of this one. Here's how you're going to determine how to wire it. It says up here, put your hand over the input or output type you're wiring. Your hand represents the PLC. What's left over is how you wire your circuit. So since we have syncing input, that means we're going to take plus 24 volt up to our switch. And we're going to go on from our switch to our input. On our trainer, the left set of terminal blocks is the plus 24 volt. And the right set is the zero volt. So I'm going to take a wire from my plus 24 volt. And we're going to use switch one to enable our servo. So I'm going to take it to the top of switch one. Then I'm going to take a wire from the bottom of switch one. And I'm going to connect it to pin one 
of the left servo. Remember, the way we've set these up is as you're looking at the front of the trainer. So the left servo, if you're on the back of it, is that right servo. So I'm going to connect it to the top left terminal. And here's the next demo and back I see you make is you think that you have this wired. So let's power it up and make sure you go back online. Like I tell my technicians, I've got hundreds of hours, cables laying on the floor, forgot to turn the machine back on, or just forgot to hit the go online button. And to see the value on that axis enable, we're going to go to our left axis and go to the status. And right there is our enable input. So as I switch switch one, I should see the enable turning on and off. And the issue is you have applied voltage to this terminal. But like I tell my technicians, they come to our class. In order for us to have action, whether that be an input or an output, we have to have current through the entire circuit. And the reason why you ask ourselves that is that tells us, okay, is our power supply good? Did I bring a wire to one side of my switch from the positive of that power supply? Do I have a wire going to that input? And then most often overlooked is, do I have a return back to the minus of the power supply? And that common is right here on pin number two. It says IO common for customer supplied 24 volt. Turn the power off to your trainer and put a wire in terminal number two, which is the second one down on the left side. And I'm going to plug it into the right set of terminals, which was the zero volt. Now power your trainer back up. And now as we switch switch one, then we see our enable input turning on and off. And also notice down here in the start inhibit, the axis enable input is disappearing every time we do that. And that's going to leave us with this feedback not configured input. But just so we could see what happens, because a lot of times you won't notice that, is we're going to click OK. And then we are going to right click our servo on. We're going to toggle that bit off. And then we're going to right click it and toggle it back on. That's going to try to do this MSO again. And we're going to have an error again. Let's right click left axis MSO and go to monitor. And we still have that error 82. And this one is usually on more of an initial setup is, yeah, we didn't configure any feedback for our motor. So we open up our left axis. Then our feedback configuration is motor feedback, which is the default. But if we go to our motor, we didn't actually set anything up. And now this is grayed out. So we're going to have to do that offline. Let's open it right back up. And we go to our motor. And the default source is nameplate data sheet. But we can go up to catalog number and it'll fill everything in for us. So we do catalog number and we click change catalog. And we have a TLP A046 005. And the big thing is at the end of that, we need the 2X right there. So I'm going to select it. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and select that on the right axis also. That was catalog number, change catalog. TLP dash A046 dash 005. And we want that one that has a 2X on it. Click OK. And we'll download it again. And immediately we see little microscopic triangles on our motion group, trainer group, left and right axis. And down here on our quick view, it says physical axis fault and battery loss fault. Because I haven't put the batteries in this thing yet. So let's go ahead and open up our left axis. And if we go down to the faults and alarms, then we have a feedback battery loss. And these servos require this 3.6 volt battery. And its part number is an ER14252. And then in the case of our trainer, they are inside of these gray covers right here. You can change these live, but I'm going to turn the power off so we can get a close up of what we're doing. On the side of this connector, there are two Phillips screws. We're going to take those out. And then don't hinge the cover up because you will break the cover. There are actually two releases on the top here. So we're just going to pop them down. And now it will slide all. And right here is where your battery goes. Spread that out and pop our battery in. And it's ready to go. And now we go back online. We see we still have access errors. And if we click on them, it says physical access fault. Feedback battery loss fault. And let's go ahead and open one of them up. And if we go to the faults and alarm, it's going to say the same thing. And we're going to have to reset this fault. And we could simply right click 
clear axis faults, but let's use this as an opportunity to get our reset into our ladder code. So let's bring down a new rung and a go look for a one examine on. And let's call this my left servo reset. And I'm going to right click it, new, create. And then let's go back over to our motion state instructions. And let's grab the MAFR, motion axis fault reset. And we're going to do the left axis. And let's call this our left servo MAFR. I'm going to right click it, new, and create. And we'll go ahead and finalize that. And the left pane, pay attention to this left axis reset right here. See, we had a little microscopic little triangle. And if I right click left servo reset and I toggle bit and get an enable, a done, and now my axis is reset. We'll go ahead and toggle that back off. And then let's toggle the left servo on back off and let's try to enable it again. We still got a few speed bumps, but let's talk through them. So I'll get enable and once again, I've got an error. So let's right click our left axis MSO and monitor it and go into, and we have error 82 again. Now this time, if we look into our axis state, it says pre-charge here. But our start is not inhibited. So this time we've got to deal with this pre-charge. And the pre-charge means that we don't have enough voltage on our servos. And that could be that we have a three-phase servo. We're only feeding it single phase. Or in this case, these servos can be powered by 240 or 120 volt. Now this trainer is set up so you can just plug it right into your wall outlet. And if we go down into our I.O. configuration and open up our servo, then we have a power section underneath motion. And its default is 200 to 240 volt three phase. Now we're going to have to go offline to change this. So just go communications, go offline. And we can select our voltage and we want 110 to 120. And when we select that, it takes it to single phase. We're going to need to do that on both the left axis and the right axis. And we'll click OK to those and re-download this program. Well, now our axis state is stopped. So if we go back over to our main routine and we toggle our left servo on bit, we're going to get an enable and a done on that. Our axis state is going to switch to running. And now if we grab the left servo, it's got some resistance on it to me turning it, whereas the right hand one is still disabled. Well, I know that it was a lot of extra steps that you feel probably were unnecessary, but hopefully when you have issues when you're setting these up later, you can come back to this and you probably will find the problem that you're looking for in it. Now we're ready to make this servo actually turn. So let's go ahead and learn about how to jog it and do some motion control. And I've created this playlist right here to help you out.